we're back out here at the big lake once again and today we're talking about a bass fishing staple that while popular the rest of the year often goes overlooked in the pre-spawn and your early spring fishing i'm of course talking about the good old wacky rig we're going to talk about my favorite ways to fish it and how i use it to catch those big springtime bass stick around you don't want to miss this one there we go i got him oh that's a big fish holy cow oh yeah come on buddy wow that's a big fish unless that's gunk no that's not gunk don't go wow that's a big fish oh my goodness come on buddy Ooh, this is a nice fish oh he swallowed it Ooh, come on dude And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today we're sort of continuing the series I'm doing on overlooked baits that are very effective during the pre-spawn and early spring fishing. Last time, we covered jerk baits, and the thing about a lot of these lures that I'm talking about is, well, you're not having to learn something new. A lot of these techniques you're already familiar with, but we're going to look at these from a different angle and show you how I'm fishing them, and it may not be how you fish them. It may not be a way that you've ever fished them before. And today, we're kind of talking about wacky rigs. Wacky rigs are a great, great presentation during the pre-spawn and early spring because, well, those bass are getting super skinny. They're going to be in some of the shallowest water they will be all year. And that's where a wacky rig can shine. And I know what you're saying. You're thinking, lowbrow, up skinny, a lot of times is going to be a lot of cover. It's going to be brush piles. It's going to be flooded brush and timber. It's going to be a nasty mess a lot of the time. And that's true. And those bass are going to try to hide up in that. And I'm still throwing a wacky rig even though that's an exposed hook. Or in this case, I've got a nail weight in it. That's a NACO rig. But a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about today apply to not just a wacky rig, but also a NACO rig. And, of course, my favorite, the Waco rig, which is just an EWG rigged worm, almost like a weightless Texas rig, where I have a 1 16th ounce uh, tungsten nail weight pushed in there, to give it a little bit of a shimmy and it works very very well it allows me to fish that bait very much the same way i would a wacky rig in fact it even has a very similar type of fall which makes it so appealing to those bass but the thing about the waco rig which makes it different from the wacky rig other than the fact that it is weedless is because when you twitch it it kind of darts around a little bit kind of has a little bit of a slither to it and it kind of reminds me a lot of those old banjo minnows. You remember the infomercials back in the 90s, right? That incredible thing that even Bill Dance was singing high praises of. Well, I'm not saying that the Waco rig is the next banjo minnow, but I really like it. I can fish it in some tough cover. I can fish it in some tough vegetation. And unlike a wacky rig, it doesn't have an exposed hook. And it's just a little bit more of a different presentation to give those bass something different to look at. Now, I'm still throwing a wacky rig quite often. You guys know I'm big on a wacky rig. And whether it's a wacky rig, whether it's a Mako rig, or whether it's a Waco rig, I'm using it in the same setup. That's a spinning combo, a finesse spinning combo. I've got 10 pound braid, and I'll usually have a six or eight pound fluorocarbon leader. That's about, I don't know, eight to 10 feet long. I generally have a longer leader I break off a lot, I retie a lot, so I want to have a longer leader so I'm not having to retie that leader every five minutes. It's also, um, this braid kind of shows up really good in this water, and this water is so pressured, this lake is so pressured, that I want that little bit extra length just to keep those bass from being so line shy, so they're not right up on it. And it seems to work. But like I said, I'm fishing this on 10-pound braid. I've got eight 
six pound fluorocarbon leader on here. I've got a regular 300 size spinning combo. And this is a seven foot medium light. And it's got a pretty noodle-y tip on it. It's very moderate, very kind of a slower tip on it. And that is kind of key because the way you're fishing is, the way that these react in the water, well, you can easily overpower them. So if you're fishing with, you know, a medium heavy or even a medium type of rod, you can easily overwork these baits just by slight twitches. So you want to make sure that you've got a good bit of slack in your line. When you're working these baits, you've got a good bit of slack in your line and that will ease up some of that action and give it a more natural presentation, which is of course what we're looking for whenever we're trying to convince fish to bite our lures. We want to look like something that they will eat. And we also want to pique those bass's curiosity because remember, bass are very instinctively curious. They want to know just exactly what it is that's in the water around them. So I fish these a little bit differently than other anglers do in, in the fact that I'm not afraid to get them dirty. I'm not afraid to get up under flooded brush even with that exposed hook. And while I do get caught up sometimes, but at the other end of the spectrum, I'm also catching plenty of nice fish, which is my incentive. I can go and fish this out of the brush every once in a great while, a couple, three times a day. But if I'm pulling those big girls out from up underneath those bushes, especially in the pre-spawn and in the early spring as we roll into the spawn, then that will well have been worth it. So don't be afraid to fish this up under flooded brush. As a matter of fact, we're gonna go out on the water and I'm going to show you just exactly how I'm fishing it because it might be a little bit different than you think it is. So let's go take a look. Now, when it comes to working a wacky rig or a Waco rig, I kind of do mine just a little bit differently. Instead of working, you know, a lot of this brush, instead of working to the end of it, and then starting backwards, I do the exact opposite. I kind of want to get as far back in there as I can. And then I kind of want to let that bait contour down the hill, you know, down the bank a little bit at a time, you know. Um, yes, it's an exposed hook, but at the same time, if you let it sink long enough, it's going to get down below those branches. You just have to be patient with it. And it works with a Waco rig, it works with a, you know, Nico rig. These are all very similar uh, presentations as far as how you can work them. Granted, they look different under the water to the fish, but like, you see empty spots, you see... Well, I'm going to try to skip back in there as far as I can. And I'm going to work back to front. And for a lot of presentations, that's going to be backwards. But I found that it actually works quite well for me. I've gotten a lot of bites doing that. So, and it also saves a lot of time because I can just make one cast in there rather than making, trying to make 30 casts into the same spot. So that's what I want to do. If I'm, if I see a gap where I think I can fit my worm, I'm just going to put it back in there, let it sink down, and then work it, contouring the bank back to front. And you can have a lot of success doing that, looking for those empty spots, like right there, you know. And then get back in there, let it sink. And it can be a little bit hairy, it can be a little, you know, a little nerve-wracking to work an open hook bait in those areas. And sometimes you'll get hung up, but most of the time I'm able to go back and get them. But that's basically, you know, the biggest thing as far as how I'm working it. Get back in there as far as you can. Get back up under that flooded brush as far as you can. And then work it back to you. With a wacky rig or a Waco rig or a Nico rig, it works very, very well. So again, this is another instance where 
being able to skip a bait comes in very, very handy. And being able to have very accurate casting. And that takes practice. You're going to have to practice getting those casts spot on. But once you do, once you get that down, then you can pretty much put those casts exactly where you want them time and time again. Then you'll be able to, you know, dictate a lot to more how you want to fish. It opens up a whole bunch of possibilities and you're not relegated to just the open spots in the water. You can go in there into those thicker spots and you can even work something like a wacky rig and instead of getting hung up you'll actually end up catching a lot of really nice fish. So you see I'm sort of working it back to front and that might be a little bit odd because we're taught to work from outside in. But the way that I'm working this is I want to skip up under there as deeply as I can. Get that bait as deep up under that brush as I can. And then let it sink so it falls below all of those branches. That keeps it from getting hung up. Plus, I want to work it along the bottom. As I said, I kind of want to contour that bottom. And I have had so much success doing that. Whether I'm fishing a wacky rig, whether I'm fishing a Waco rig, or whether I'm fishing a Nako rig. Now, I'm not just fishing it under flooded brush. Out here in these flats like this, they're still exceptionally shallow. And as you have those females during the spawn, when they deposit their eggs, they're coming back out through areas like this. And a wacky rig, a Nako rig, and a Waco rig can still be super effective as they're coming back out. Now remember, they're going to be using those same migration routes that they used to get back into those pockets. So they might be a little bit closer to the bank still, but they're not going to be right up under the flooded brush. They're going to be pulled back a little bit some. So rather than having to fish all the way in the backs of pockets, you can kind of work your way out. Because like we said before, the bass go in waves when it comes to the spawn. The males go in, dig the beds, the females come in, lay the eggs, they leave, and then the males, they're left to be the fry garters. So as those females are coming out, yes, they're going to be a little bit lighter having deposited their eggs, but they're also going to be more inclined to bite your lures because, well, they've done their job and they're ready to eat. So a lot of those good females that I have found, I've actually caught on a wacky rig. In fact, here recently, I was able to catch a nice four plus pound female that had already deposited her eggs, but she was working her way back out to the middle of the lake, and it was a great catch. It was a lot of fun, especially whenever you're hooking into something like that with spinning combo, with finesse gear. You know, you've really got to be on your game because a lot of times you can really overwork that fish. You can break it off. You can, you know, give her a head shake and she can throw the bait or whatever. There's a thousand things that can go wrong. So you have to make sure that you are mindful of the situation that's going on. Like I said, these wacky rigs, these setups, I've caught some really huge fish using these exactly in the way that I'm describing. But you can still fish them out in the open. I wouldn't recommend fishing them in super deep water. A Nako rig might be okay, especially with the nail weight putting in. It's going to drop pretty fast, almost like a Texas rig. It will drop pretty fast. But a Waco rig and the Wacky rig are going to fall very similarly. They're going to have a very slow fall rate. So you need to have that in mind whenever you're fishing something like that out in the open, out in deeper water, even something like five or six feet of water. I suggest dropping it over the side of the boat. If you have a boat, if you're on the bank, if you're fishing from the pier or something like that, drop it where you can see it fall and look at how long it takes to get to the bottom right where you are. And if it takes that long to get to the bottom when it's shallow, imagine how long it's going to take to get to the bottom as it gets deeper. So don't be afraid to get a little crazy with your wacky rigs. They're wacky for a reason. Don't be afraid to fish them in some junk under some flooded brush around some cover that might make you nervous. Trust me, it can definitely be well worth it. And you can come away with some huge bass. That's the thing I really like about a wacky rig is I tend to catch much bigger fish because it's a slower presentation and you have to have patience in order to work it properly. Dead sticking is essentially the name of the game when it comes to a wacky rig. 
you've got to sit there and you've got to let it fall. You've got to let it get to the point of the water column where it's going to be the most effective. And once you figure that out, once you dial that in, you'll be amazed at the size and quality of the fish that you'll be catching. And you'll be catching plenty of those nice fish. So there you have it. Some easy to do cheats and tricks to help you with your springtime wacky rig fishing. And trust me, you will catch nice size bass, better than average bass than you're used to catching with other presentations. That's the beauty of a wacky rig. And once you start doing it and you figure out how to work it in that thick stuff, then you just want to do it more and more. And you'll find that you've always got a wacky rig title. Thanks for watching Low Brow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.